wins last year, but each really feels like they're ready to turn it around. And that's the nature of the NFL, that you have that optimism, because 14 of the last 15 years, we've seen at least one team go from the bottom of their division to winning their division. In fact, Philadelphia and Jacksonville both did it last year. That turned out pretty well for both of them. Andre Roberts now to return it. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They're led out by a man who started more Super Bowls than anyone in NFL history, the great Tom Brady. I can't help but admire the career Tom Brady has had. The numbers are off the charts. The Super Bowl championships and rings, we know that they are incredible. But how about the durability? Had one season that he missed, most of that season because of a knee injury. The rest of the time, he answers the bell and wills his team to victory more times than not. And we keep hearing from people who are waiting to see the drop off in his play. I'd quit worrying about it. I'd quit looking for it. He says he wants to play until he's 45. Is there any reason to doubt him? His skills have shown no sign of declining. On first and 10, here's Brady. His throw incomplete. The offensive starters now for the Jets. I don't know about you, but I love a good undrafted free agent success story. So let's take a look at Robbie Anderson, wide receiver, because in 2017, 63 catches, 941 yards, and a strong candidate for the Pro Bowl. Didn't quite get there, but was knocking on the door. How about that for an undrafted free agent out of Temple, now making good in the NFL? Brady will try again on second down. Steps away to his left. And down he'll go at the 25. All that gets him is just a yard, and now it's third down. The starting 11 defensively for the Bears. Second round pick in 2015. Eddie Goldman holds down the middle of this defensive line with some toughness, some leverage, and some personality. Understands he's going to be double and sometimes triple teamed on every snap. Does it with a smile, takes on those blockers, and opens up space for his other pass rushers. So trouble already here on their opening drive. This is third and nine. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Wait, 10. From the gun, it's Brady. And he's got a noon one. That's good for a jet first down, a gain of 13. And a key number on that play, three. Third play of the drive, third down, spectacular catch, turns into a first down. First down, saves him from a three and out. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Brady now on first down. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. It'll be a gain of six, and that'll make it a second down. I like it, I like it, I like it. Get everyone involved in the passing game, and you know you can create those great mismatches throwing it to your guys out of the backfield. And on the first drive, that can also help establish some rhythm, right? I think so. It gets everyone involved. They feel like they're part of it. It really gets them amped up as they go forward. Wait, 20. Wait, 20. Brady to throw on second down. Now he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. First connection there of the afternoon for those two, and it's good for a first down. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 48-yard line. 20. Now a first carry for the former Cleveland Brown, Isaiah Crowell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. 
when we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. On second down, here's Brady. And it's incomplete. Getting a hand in there and knocking it away, Eddie Jackson. When I watched that play, I thought about what my coaches had told me in the past. The biggest teaching point, get your head around it. Locate the football so you can make a play on it while it's in the air. That's exactly what he did there. That was nice. Here comes the seventh play of this opening drive. They've moved it well, but here's third down. Working from the gun, it's Brady. He hits Jermaine Kurz. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. His first catch of the game, good for 11 and a first down. Nice job keeping that opening drive alive, and they're in plus territory, that part of the field where you really want to convert on third down, they did. Big-time pickup for them, and now I think the aggressive play callers think to themselves, this part of the field, I take my shot at the end zone because the closer you get to the end zone, the field can, gets condensed. It makes it a lot tougher to run those routes. You still got a chance to actually run past people right now. Take your shot at the end zone early in the down and distance count. On first down, Brady. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. This is Crowell, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain that time as it's going to leave him with a third and about three to go. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle. That's what we saw right there. Yeah, that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. They'll try to run for it with Corral. And not going to be able to push this forward. He runs into a wall right at the line of scrimmage. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding him to no gain. On now is the kicker, Jason Myers, for the field goal try. From the left hash, it's a 42-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jets hit the board first. It's 3-0. A dozen plays on that drive that ends with the field goal. Let's go ahead and break out some of the old chestnuts here, right, partner? Keep the ball in front, rally to it, and make the tackle. Right? No big plays given up. No balls over your head. Bend, don't break. Hold on, hold on. Chestnuts? Ah, uh, you like Come that on. one? What does that mean, break out the, just because you break, you break chestnuts? I, I'm not sure about that, but I'm just going with why they said that. I have no idea. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. Now the return man. This is Benny Cunningham. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. There's quarterback Mitchell Trubisky leading out the Chicago Bears offense. Partner, what have you seen from Trubisky now that we have a pretty good chunk of games about a year and a half into his NFL career? Always knew he was a worker, so that didn't surprise me at all that he would put the time in, but you're seeing it come out on the field now. Finding receivers with more proficiency, reading defenses better, showing that big-time ability that he flashed at North Carolina had a six-touchdown game earlier this year against Tampa Bay. But I think the extra bonus to his game 
that maybe they didn't count on is legs because they already have Jordan Howard and Tariq Cohen to run the football, but he becomes a third runner, and he's flashed that ability and helped his team in a big way this season. On first and 10, it's Trubisky. Hits his target, it's Taylor Gabriel. Give him 13 yards on the opening play of the drive and also give him a first down. carry for Tariq Cohen and he'll be brought down losing yardage back at the 40. It's a loss of two there bringing up second down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker and what that means is his ability to read react and make a play but on that one he looked like one of those guys. Prior to the snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 3-0 is our score, and we're back to Soldier Field after this. The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis back with you as it's Bears football here to begin quarter number two. But they face a second and long to start things out. Trubisky. And well, this is Gabriel on the catch. A good pick up there. 26 yards. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys that we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now a play fake here on first down. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he'll get this one down to about the 20 yard line. 15 more there and they're on a roll. It's another first down. Now they're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't I, seem to I want it. I didn't offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. A first trip to the red zone for the Bears. First and 10 right at the 20. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Now the ball comes loose, and the Jets have recovered. All these years we've been watching the game, I start to get the sense that whenever it rains out, those guys have to touch the ball and carry it. They're extremely resentful about that weather. Yeah, I'm just happy I'm not resentful that we have a roof over our heads. I know that much. Yeah, maybe we won't fumble our play sheets here as we just saw the fumble happen on the field. New York Jets set to get the ball back again. And a franchise, as you look back in history, Charles, they made it to the conference championship game in 2009, 2010. But a lot of the years since then have been kind of a perpetual rebuild. What do they need to do to get back on track? I think on offense, build around their rookie quarterback, Sam Darnold. Offensive line, continue to beef it up. But they've got to get some playmakers out wide on the perimeter. Guys that scare defenses in order to open up the running game and make Isaiah Crowell that much more effective. They run with a rookie from Virginia State, Trenton Cannon. 
And a nice gain there as he'll be taken down just shy of the 20. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It does allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! Now Brady throwing on second down. And seeing nowhere to throw, he chucks this one away from harm. Incomplete. Now it's third down. The Jets on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This will be third and six. Wait, 20! Shotgun now for Brady. And this is going to be incomplete. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. On fourth down, here's Lachlan Edwards to punt it. Tariq Cohen is deep for the Bears. The Bears offense now getting ready to take over. And they'll be looking to atone for last time's mistake of fumbling inside the red zone. Certainly they don't want to do that again. And so much emphasis placed on red zone offense. I mean, you have periods devoted in practice just for that because everyone knows how vital it is to put points on the board when you've entered that part of the field. And to come away with nothing, that's difficult for a team to handle. And difficult, and now we'll see if they can make it less difficult on themselves on this drive. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. Now it's Trubisky. Gonna let one fly for Robinson. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. From the gun, it's Trubisky. And he's taken down. Back in his own seven. Okay, you know my bias is about to come out here. A lot of people think that the offense is just moving in the wrong direction. I'd say they're moving in the right direction because the defense is pushing them back. Former defensive guy. Now, as a quarterback third and long, you really got to rally the troops here, don't you? Yeah, you do in a big way. And what else do you have to look out for? More pressure coming at you because it seems to be working pretty well. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. And instead, they want to throw it off play action. He's going to wind up and air it out. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. Morris Claiborne, the former number one pick of the Cowboys there defensively. Well, shame on them, Coach Davis. They went against your advice. They threw the football, and now they're backed up to punt this away. They're actually fortunate. They went against my advice, but they didn't turn it over, right? No takeaway for the defense. They'll punt it now. They probably could have gained a few yards if they ran it, though, and helped out with field position. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. They'll get nine yards on the return there following a punt of 42. And the Jets will have a short field to work with as they take over first and 10. 
Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. They were forced to punt last time. I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot. Great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here. They can go ahead and do it. First down is Brady, and nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away, but it does get away at its second down. Well, he did almost everything right. Excellent coverage, breaks on the football, just unable to haul it in and take it the other way, so he dropped an interception. The key for him now, don't dwell on it, just move on to the next play. Brady's incompletion on first down leads to a second and ten. Here's a give to Crowell. Not much there. Maybe a couple as he's taken down at the 40. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter games turn into bigger runs later. Throwing his Brady on third down. He's going to air one out. And this will be caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Jets. Robbie Anderson, 40 yards. And the Jets find a way to stretch their lead. Well, there was a little extra pressure with that one because it was third down. He didn't care. He snagged it with one hand like it was routine. The key is to make a play in a tough situation. Doesn't matter how. And in this case, one-handed gets it done. Terrific play for us to watch. Jason Myers now for the extra point. Footing always a concern, but the extra points up and good. And the lead grows to 10-0. Scoring summary, three-play drive. And it's finished off by a New York Jets touchdown. Here's Myers now to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Onto the field now come the Bears. And the results for them have not been strong to this point. Two drives have ended in a turnover and then a punt. So would it be too snarky for me to say that they've shown improvement? Because you had two, two drives with turnovers. <laughs> now they punted it away, so at least they didn't turn it over. So that's good, right? You're going to get some angry users <laughs> reaching out to you on social media. Well, I don't mean to be. I was actually looking for the positive. Silver lining, you know. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their 25-yard line. From the shotgun is Trubisky. Flush to his right. Space to maneuver at the 40. And he takes it all the way up to the 47. No one there to help out downfield, but no problem. Scrambling for 22 and a first. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him. And he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. Big hitter to start the drive has him up near midfield here for first and ten. Two minutes to go here in the first half. 
We're back to Soldier Field following this short break. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report, but business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coaches' two-minute drill. First down, Trubisky, throw left side complete. It's Robinson, and taking it across midfield and inside the 45. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. They'll throw on first down with Trubisky. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter, a lot of time to change things. Again on second and 10, it's Trubisky. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Sims. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They run play action for Howard. Now Trubisky. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Morris Claiborne, the former number one pick of the Cowboys there defensively. I tell you, Brandon, this defense is playing with some confidence. Haven't allowed a point yet. Flying to the football. I'm telling you, it's almost 11 to the ball on every snap. Another nice job there to force an incompletion. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. Now the Jets offense gets ready to head back on the field, and they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Wait 20! Wait 20! Waiting now on first down. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. Now before this second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So we're back in the offense getting set following the call of that timeout. To throw on second down, Brady, and an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. The good number of coaches at any time they call an in route are really worried about the play because there's so much traffic ordinarily that the ball has to get through to get to the receiver, and on that play, it was batted down. The Jets on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This will be third and six. 20, 20. 
from the gun. Brady, complete out right to Curse. And he'll get it up here this time to the 21. And now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. All right, so the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. Here's Lachlan Edwards now as he'll kick it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Yeah, this is taken at the 23. A good return there, 17 yards, and the Bears take over. The Bears offense now heading back out onto the field, and with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, all right? So you've got to go out and create some offense for us here and give us some points. No way does that guy get on the field on this drive. Uh, poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But, so, hey, listen, if some guy, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Now Trubisky on first down. And he'll be brought down right at the 45-yard line. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. And we are back here. I'm Brandon Gaunt alongside Charles Davis. So the offense takes the timeout. And now we're set to get going. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Now Trubisky. And he's going to be wrapped up and driven down. Brandon Copeland in there to sack him for a loss of six. Play action, it's Trubisky. And that is incomplete. 16 seconds now on the clock. And what did we talk with them about prior to the game? Their ability to move the chains, pick up first downs. So far, 0 for 3 on third down. If that continues, they'll have little chance of winning this one. Here's Pat O'Donnell now, as he's on to punt for Chicago. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Nine seconds to play, likely the final snap of the first half as it's first and ten. They begin with a run by Crowell. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. So we reach halftime here in a ten-point game. Forecast calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. Cunningham now to return. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. 
So here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter. And right now these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting because three straight drives have ended with them putting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Four down, four down. Come on. They'll begin the drive with Howard. He takes this one across the 35 to the 36, a gain of about four. Tough running there. That's a hard earn four yards. Yeah, those are the unsung kind of runs. They don't fill up the stat sheet, but they do set you up in good position on second down. Now Trubisky to throw on second. And this is incomplete. Trey Burton, the one he was looking for. And it's third down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. On third down, Trubisky. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Trubisky fighting the former Eagle Burton for the Chicago first. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. They go play action here on first down. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. Well, you know, we've got a pretty big sample size now from the NFL season, Charles. I want to ask you, going back to the draft, who was the biggest steal in 2018? Well, the biggest steal is Philip Lindsay. Oh, guy that wasn't even drafted. Wasn't even drafted, but how about what the Denver personnel department did, identifying him ahead of time, potentially not being drafted and ready to pounce when the call didn't come for him. And what a job he's done for them, running it, catching it, open field guy, in traffic, he's done it all. I think Saquon Barkley from the Giants has been everything as advertised. Calvin Ridley with Atlanta has been spectacular. Quentin Nelson, offensive guard with the Colts, his rookie of the month, wasn't he? Yeah, back in October. How about that? Yeah, how about that for an offensive lineman? We've had four quarterbacks start games, Mayfield, Darnold, Allen, and Rosen. And Quentin Nelson, one final note on that. He was the first offensive lineman ever given that award, so hats off to him. Definitely. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. On first down, they run with Howard. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. This is Howard on second down. And he'll fall forward to the 29-yard line. Just a gain of a yard there, and now it'll be third down. Well, when you go from second to four to third and three, that just tells you who won that battle on the last play, huh? Yeah, first round went to the offense, second round the defense.
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Trubisky now off the bootleg. And he hits the tight end. It's Deion Sims. And he's going to get the first down here as he's taken down at the 22. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. Trubisky now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Here's Trubisky to throw, and his throw is incomplete. A pretty good coverage there, and both of these defenses, they've had good coverage throughout this one. No doubt about it, and in today's NFL, where we're used to a bit more scoring, this feels almost like a well-pitched game in baseball on both sides where the tension continues to build. Who's going to make the big play? Second and ten. It's Trubisky again. And he's just going to get rid of this thing. To no one here, he throws it away. And now it's third. What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. That ball had to be gotten rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. And the blitz does come. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Tremaine Johnson that time there to force the incompletion. There was the pressure you were talking about, force the incompletion. And it doesn't always have to end in a sack, does it? Sometimes you can make a good play by forcing the incompletion with the pressure. Now Cody Parkey out to try the field goal. From the left hash, this from 39. And Parkey's kick is good. And they get themselves on the board here. It's 10 to 3. So they get three, certainly hoping for six after a 13-play drive. So you console yourself on defense by saying you did your job, right? If they go 13 plays, you only give up a field goal. You did a nice job there. But here's the other part. 13 plays. You don't force any mistakes. You don't take the ball away. Maybe that's the way they should look at it. Parkey now following the made field goal to kick this one off. This is taken about seven yards deep. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Jets' offense now as they get ready for their first possession of the second half. up past the 30 to the 31. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. Wait, 20, 20, yeah. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Corral. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. They'll wind up losing three, and now it's third down. So statistically, both of these offenses have a rough time getting a running game going. 
But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. The Jets on third down. They've hit it 50%. Three of six to this point. This is third and seven. By 20! By 20! From the gun, it's Brady. Found his target. It's Anderson. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. A Jet first down, 18 big yards that time. And another thing that makes the comeback route really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. now. 9 of 15 throwing the ball. 60% at its first and 10. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now at Soldier Field. It's Jet football as they've got the lead here and we get set to begin quarter number four. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. The fourth quarter here, they've got the lead. They want to keep it on the ground. That's what they're doing. Smart football. Keep the clock grinding. Keep it going. But you got to figure now, they're going to see more people stacked up at the line of scrimmage as they try and bleed it out. From midfield, here's Brady. And he's got his big tight end over the middle, complete. A big 30-yard play on third. Big hook up there, forced to throw it on third down. The connection's going to keep the drive alive and also keep the clock moving. Yeah, and from a defensive perspective, didn't get a sack, didn't knock the ball free, didn't break up the pass. The clock keeps running on you. You're in a dire situation now. So a big play as it gets him all the way down to the 20 now for first and 10. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. The all-pro in two positions. Khalil Mack there to make the stop. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. On the run, it's Crowell. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. One of the bigger plays in the game thus far, and the crowd getting into it as we come up on a big third down. But look at this, Brady, option right. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, 
I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to perhaps salt this one away. And Myers able to knock it through. And they will stretch their lead to 10 now at 13-3. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make them score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. The Bears' offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder. It puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Trubisky brings the Bears up first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Out of the gun, Trubisky. Throw left side taken in by Miller. And he gets this up just shy of the 30 to the 29 before he's out of bounds. That throw good for four. It's second down. Second and six, just inside the 30. Hey, you're on an island over there. You're on an island. Get up! 180! Get up! On second down, here's Trubisky. And this is Gabriel on the catch. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Trubisky to Gabriel there for a Bears first down. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. So the Bears with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Looking to throw Trubisky on first down. The screen pass here to Cohen. And to the 42-yard line here and brought down there. A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard and it's second down. Now it's Trubisky. And all oh, this is taken in one-handed. What a catch. That one goes for 24 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Trubisky. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And he'll work it inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Trubisky to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
Give him 10 yards there as this offense is on a roll. This drive continues to plunge forward. Trubisky will throw. And not able to get it that time. He'd hit on six straight passes. Not there. Second down. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead, fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Throwing now is Trubisky. He's going to dump that off to his running back, Cohen. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. A nice pickup of 14, and it moves the stick, sets up a first and goal. Throwing once more, it's Trubisky. And his throw is going to be incomplete. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with. Howard all alone in the backfield on second and goal. They'll come out in the pistol. Again, it's Trubisky. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Looking to throw again, Trubisky. That's incomplete. How about the defensive stand here from first and goal, three straight incompletion. Yeah, I think people are wondering why didn't they try and run it at least once in there. But once the first incompletion happened, it's almost like they were committed to throwing the ball from then on out. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to get it back to a one-score game. And Parkey's kick is good. And they will cut the lead back down to a touchdown now at 13-6. to six. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that's the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. So with under 30 seconds to play, this is the game right here. And now the Jets are going to get this one, and that might be all she wrote. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Take it inside the 40 to the 39-yard line. And now the Bears electing to call a timeout defensively as the clock stops with 23 seconds to go in the game. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. Go. 
Go, have to go. imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seven. They'll run it again with Crowell. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And now the Bears going to signal for another timeout. As the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. So a defensive timeout. Chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. The Jets on third down, five out of nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. Now Brady. He's got his man on the crossing route. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As he'll stop it with 11 seconds remaining in the ball game. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. Brady, 11 of 17 passing thus far. He's got his guys a first and 10. Brady will take a knee here, and that should just about do it. Well, Charles, the forecast called for rain throughout the entire game, and we got rain throughout the entire game, but these two teams... They had fun getting dirty out there. They love the slop. Did you trust the forecast ahead of time? Are you I, one of those guys that's skeptical, skeptical about it, or did you skeptical. trust it? But when I saw just a big blob of green on the radar, I said, okay, let's trust. Yeah, and that's why I'm glad you took my advice. Got your notes laminated, because you know, open air booth, that rain can affect us as well, although not as much as the guys on the field. But let's face it, it's kind of fun to watch these types of games, isn't it? It is. By the way, how impressive is it that you travel with a laminator? I didn't even know there was a portable laminator. The things that you learn. Golly, wise beyond his years.